In this tutorial, we'll look at area timers. Timers are a very handy piece of hardware which is built into the microcontroller. Uh, you can use it for uh, various applications and basically it's used to you know generate piece precise timing and uh, it is also used to count external pulses or you know it is used as a counter uh, this is the frequency measurement in general and the other application is pulse width modulation wherein you uh, you can control uh, speed of a motor uh, with using this we'll see all of these or you know you can control brightness of led uh, all that sort of things so uh, let's see uh, in detail about the AVR timers. AVR has, uh, you know, the family has uh, six to seven timers integrated depending on what uh, controller you are using. For the 80 Mega 32 that we have been using in this series, uh, it has three timers. And so these are uh, timer zero, timer one, and timer two. So in this timer one, zero and timer two, okay. So these are eight bit timers and timer one is a 16 bit timer. Now the, the timer unit that we have inside this particular controller, it's independent of the CPU. So what, what I mean by that is uh, once we turn on the timer, it just keeps ticking all the time, irrespective of what CPU is doing. So. Uh, this comes in very handy so uh, you need it need not depend on the CPU to uh, do you know the time counting or you know the generating the PWM so what we usually have here is so there are two sources for the timer and I would be using the word timer or counter interchangeably uh, depending on what the application is so uh, it, it has two input sources one could be the oscillator so it could be internal oscillator or external oscillator so in this tutorial se series uh, we have a 16 megahertz uh, oscillator on the board so we'll be using that and the another input would be you know external input and it comes on one of the AVR pins. So we'll see what pins this comes into. Now out of this only one uh, of these input sources can go to the timer unit. So depending on whether this control is 0 or 1. So let's say so what is the difference between two? So if it is measuring the oscillator frequency it's called the internal timer if it is measuring the external pulses or external input on the pin it's called the counter and uh, so this input goes to to a resistor called the timer resistor and this timer resistor basically uh, depending on what timer unit you're using it could be 8 or 16 bit so uh, on every uh, clock pulse of this input the timer ticks so uh, so this is the timer resistor now let's see what all resistors are required uh, to make a timer work and we'll basically try and understand how it works so that you know we can understand the role of resistors and there are mind-boggling number of resistors in this so you need not remember all of these uh, if you understand how a timer works you can you know put put all the uh, you know uh, pieces of puzzles and make the timer work so let's start with timer zero so as i said timer zero it's a it's a eight bit timer so this is eight bit and what it has is so and the main resistor with which you know which uh, counts up on every oscillator input it's called the timer count resistor or the TCNT now this can be you know so since this is timer 0 this will be TCNT 0 
So for timer 1 it would be Tc and T1 and timer 2 it would be Tc and T2. So this is Tc and T0 and this is 8 bit. So this would be 0 to 7. All right. And there is one more resistor. This resistor it's called the output compare resistor. Now, see what that is in just a minute. Again this is for timer 0 this is an 8 bit resistor. It's it's called the OCR and is output compare resistor and this is again 8 bit in size and so why, why do you need this so once you turn on the timer it's key it keeps ticking and if uh, you know if we want that to uh, if you want the unit to let us know that it has reached a specific value that value should be stored in output compare resistor so it's kind of a comparison resistor which keeps monitoring the timer uh, you know uh, this uh, this TCNT resistor so so basically what it does is so these two resistors these are compared internally so this is all inside the controller so this is compared this is a comparator and if uh, like let's say uh, so this the TCNT will go from so since it's 8 bit TCNT will go from TCNT 0 will go from 0 to 255 so and let's say we load this OCR with value of say 127 okay so as soon as so uh, so we turn on the timer it keeps ticking and as soon as it reaches 127 the comparison is done I mean both the resistors are equal and it raises a flag it's just a single bit flag in a different resistor which we'll discuss a little later and that uh, flag it's called OCF okay OCF 0 since it's timer 0 so this flag is raised indicating that the comparison has occurred so so these two inputs auto comparator and if it is equal it raises the OCF flag similarly if a timer overflows uh, so it runs from 0 to 55 and uh, again it uh, rolls over and starts again so once it's roll once it rolls over it raises a flag called the timer overflow so this flag it's called the timer overflow so this is TOV and since it's zero it's zero so uh, again you know you should understand it's working so that uh, you know you'll understand how it act, how the timer internally works so um, we turn on the time we'll see how we turn on so we turn on the timer the TC and T0 it keeps incrementing and whenever it matches the output compare resistor it raises uh, output compare flag and whenever this timer overflows its maximum value which is 255 in this case it raises another flag called the timer overflow flag all right so let's go ahead and discuss a little more as to how fast the timer takes so okay so this timer take it depends on the oscillator frequency okay and it could also uh, you know we can configure it to directly work on oscillator frequency or we can uh, make it to work on factor of the oscillator frequency now so let's do some calculations here and see like for our board we have 16 megahertz crystal on it so uh, the frequency would be 16 megahertz the time of the oscillator so, so the time period would be 1 divided by 16 megahertz so if you do this uh, this should be around 62.5 nanoseconds so uh, you can see it's it's very very fast so every 62.5 nanoseconds it keeps ticking so uh, so so you can I can just see how fast it goes now this would not be of much help if it is 
ticking so fast like say you want to generate a delay of one second or say 100 milliseconds so uh, this would be you know uh, even if if we do uh, you know 62 into 100 it's uh, 6.25 uh, milliseconds which is not enough to generate a delay of say 10 milliseconds or 50 or 100 so apart from this we can also take reciprocal of this i'm sorry the, the factor of this frequency okay and all these factors we'll see in a little while okay so so these are the working resistors of the timer the tcnt and the ocr there's one more resistor called the tccr timer counter control resistor and for timer zero it's tccr zero now let us look at this in detail because this is the timer which controls operation of whatever we have discussed earlier all right so here we have the timer counter control resistor so you need not worry about what we have here from d3 to d7 now these bits they are used for some additional functions like the PWM and uh, you know for waveform generation so this is all for PWM and waveform now for normally if you want to just turn on the timer and get it ticking we should be worried about the first three bits and by the way we will uh, look into these when we are using this timer to control a motor or intensity of light we'll generate the pwm using this and we'll see that later so now let's concentrate on this so okay so the bits d0 d1 and d2 so these are uh, three bits which makes eight possible combinations and these bits so cs it stands for clock source and so so as we have discussed here so and there are two in i mean two options for the input frequency one is the direct oscillator frequency or a factor of oscillator frequency and these three bits enable us uh, to you know give that so the first option when all the three are zero it's it's the no clock so if all the three are zero then it means there is no input and the timer is stopped now this next option is 001 and this means the input is the oscillator frequency or the system clock so if we make it as 001 on our board it will run on 16 megahertz so the timer input frequency would be 16 now similarly the next options would be I'll just write them down one zero and one 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 did i miss anything four yes so this would be five this would be five and this would be six okay so this is five this is six and seven so this number two would be clock divided by eight and uh, next option would be clock divided by 64 uh, so there's no uh, direct relation which you can de derive here so this is clock divided by uh, 256 clock divided by 1024 and 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 also it uh, we also said that it, we could use it as uh, timer right so this takes you now so these are you know these options are used as when it is used as a timer so we also said that you could use it as a counter so if you're using it as a counter and if we set the clock source to be these two values it acts as a counter so where does it count from it counts from the clock on t0 pin on the microcontroller so the first option it clocks on the falling edge and this clocks on the rising edge now what is this t0 pin so which pin is this t0 let us just check out okay so the t0 pin is the port b0 so 
uh, if we give this option as 6 or 7 you know in decimal it takes uh, you know whatever frequency we feed at uh, this it takes it and uh, if it is 6 then it ticks on every falling edge of that particular input that we give and if it is 111 it ticks on rising edge of the uh, T0. Now, uh, so this is the basics of the timer 0. So, you look at PWM in one of the later videos when you want to control, say, a motor. Uh, now, for now, let me just revive as to what you need to do in terms of uh, you know using the timer 0. So, basically, uh, you have two resistors uh, TC and T0 and OCR. 0 so TC and T0 is the actual time which keeps ticking OCR is the uh, comparator resistor you know which uh, just holds a value and if the TC and T comes up to that value it raises a flag so it, you could use this uh, to generate a specific delay and if the timer overflows uh, after its final value then it, it generates a timer overflow flag now one more thing we need to discuss here is where are these flags stored. So these are uh, stored in a resistor called TIFR, Timer Interrupt Flag Resistors. Now the TIFR is again a 8-bit resistor and it's uh, and it's 0 at bit. This is TOV0. So this is timer 0 overflow flag and the next bit as you could guess it's for output compare flag so this is bit 0 this is bit 1 okay and now you could also guess that you know the remaining bits of this TIFR resistor are reserved for the other timers so these are all for timer 1 and 2 Okay, so since you're not using this as of now, you need not worry about what the remaining bits are. Uh, so, uh, so this completes the discussion on timer zero. In the next tutorial, we'll be using this, and uh, you know, uh, left out the details here on TCCR zero, the remaining bits of TCCR zero, and the TIFR zero intentionally so that you know you will not be <laughs> overwhelmed with this resistor definitions so in the next video we'll use this timer zero to do something cool so we'll be possibly doing persistence of vision with these timers and with that you'll understand uh, why it is very helpful uh, uh, using the timers independently of the uh, controller maybe we need to cover interrupts first but still I would give you some hints and you would also if not persistent revisions we can use uh, these timers to generate a delay uh, independent of the CPU. So let's do a couple of examples in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe.